Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. So Apple quietly launched the new M3 MacBook Air. There was no big marketing campaign or fancy product video. It sort of just launched. In fact, the local Apple store was pretty quiet when I picked mine up on launch day. And now after a full week of using the M3 MacBook Air as my daily laptop in different situations and places, the M3 Air could well be the perfect everyday laptop for most people. So if you're considering a new everyday laptop or upgrading from a previous MacBook, here is my honest review of the M3 Air. I'll compare it uh, to my M2 Air here that I love so much. They look practically the same. Um, and I'll share my everyday experience with this laptop, both the good and the bad. Firstly, the M3 Air's performance has surprised me, especially in this configuration. Apple now finally offers a 16 gigabyte RAM pre-configuration option, and that's exactly the one I have here. It's the 13 inch model with eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, 512 gigabytes SSD, and 16 gigabytes RAM. And the performance leap from the M2 to the M3 chipset is bigger than I thought. So on the M2 Air with 8GB of RAM, it managed a Geekbench 6 score of 1,487 single core and 5,222 multi-core. The M3 Air with 16GB of RAM scored 3,030 single core and 11,586 multi-core. That's essentially a 100% increase in performance. And these numbers have translated well into real life usage over the last week. Apps open instantaneously. I can multitask without the RAM throttling the experience, and I can even edit 4K video on Final Cut Pro relatively smoothly. Previously, the M2 Air was great to use, but as soon as I had more than three apps open or eight Chrome tabs open, my M2 Air with eight gigabytes of RAM was sluggish as heck. The 16 gigabyte configuration unlocks a lot more from the M3 chip and it absolutely flies. So the MacBook Air M3 is a great performer for video editors, gamers, creative designers, especially if you use GPU intensive apps like AutoCAD, Blender or Premiere Pro. If you use your laptop for just email, web browsing and social media, you're not going to see too much of a difference. A big part of the killer performance is the RAM and we need to talk about this because if you're considering the new MacBook Air, a RAM upgrade is the first consideration you should probably think about. It's hard to understand why the M3 Air still has a base configuration with 8GB RAM and 256GB storage in 2024. I genuinely think Apple needs to be shipping the Air with at least 16GB of RAM. I cannot begin to tell you how much the additional RAM has helped unlock the potential of the M3 chip as someone who has used the M2 Air with 8GB for two years. And that M2 Air with 8GB of RAM was consistently throttled because the memory is shared between the CPU and GPU. So in reality, there's almost always less than 8GB of memory available to use. And a lot of that memory is allocated to VRAM anyway, used by the GPU cores. I won't dive too deep into how memory works. Um, I made a whole video breaking down how RAM impacts your Mac. I'll link it on the screen somewhere. But the point is the 16 gigabyte RAM paired with the M3 chip has been amazing. And the 16 gigabyte pre-configuration option is a welcome change, long overdue though. I highly recommend seriously considering the RAM upgrade. It will help your day-to-day -day workflow and also help future-proof your MacBook Air. Speaking of the future, Apple called the new M3 Air the world's best consumer laptop for AI. And not sure exactly how they tested that claim because I mean, every Silicon Mac has had a 16 core neural engine ever since the M1 came out. But it is interesting because the AI marketing push likely hints at major AI features and functionality in future Apple software. And there's a good chance we'll see more AI related announcements at WWDC this year. And I'm really excited about that. The M3 Air does work well with onboard AI tasks like Adobe's Generative Fill, and it works relatively quickly on the M3 chipset too. We'll have to see how Apple chooses to implement AI into macOS. There should be big things coming on the horizon because Apple apparently disbanded uh, the Apple Car team and they're funneling that money and budget into AI projects. 
Now, battery life is incredible on the M3 Air, improving on an already great M2 Air. It's one of those rare laptops that I bring outside to work and I don't have an anxiety with the battery. I'm able to get a full day easily out of this laptop. So I'm consistently getting 15 hours on a single charge with everyday use, which for me is web browsing, videos, lots of typing and emails, music and creative apps like Figma, Lightroom and stuff like that. On the M2 Air, I was getting about 14 hours, give or take, so I've seen an increase in battery performance with the M3 Air. To give you an example, I've been able to go out to work at a cafe and after a few hours, the M3 Air had 70% of juice. Then I came back to the office and worked with more intensive apps like Final Cut Pro till 6 to 7 p.m. at night, and I still had a little under 25% battery left. All this to say, the battery life is just too good on the MacBook Air. There's not many, if any, laptops in this size category that can compete with the M3 Air. It gives me lots of confidence to be able to work wherever and whenever, even if I forget to bring a charger with me. And that's really what the MacBook Air is all about. Maximum portability with terrific productivity and consumption use. Another welcome change is the new anodization seal for the midnight colored M3 Air, which makes it less prone to fingerprints. If you have the M2 Air or if you've watched my previous reviews, you'll know that it's the biggest fingerprint magnet. There's almost no point wiping it down. I personally didn't mind the fingerprints, but it seemed to bother many of you. So Apple has given it a new anodization seal that's also seen on the Space Black MacBook M3 Pro. So it definitely has reduced fingerprints on the M3 Air over the week that I've used it, but you absolutely still see them. And also the keyboard gets really oily and grimy quickly. What's interesting is I've found the new midnight color to be more of a muted hue of blue. I don't know if you can tell in the shots, but the M2 Air has a truly deep midnight blue hue to it. Whereas the new anodization process has slightly taken out that deep blue hue. Either way, I still absolutely love this color. It's probably my favorite color. And other than the new anodization process, design-wise, they're basically identical, as you can see here. But yeah, excuse my very dirty M2 Air. I wasn't kidding when I said I use this laptop a lot. There is an interesting trade-off that I haven't seen covered much, and it's found on Apple's technical specification page. It looks like Apple has removed the wide stereo sound feature found on the M2 Air, and after testing the speakers between the M2 Air and M3 Air, it does seem like the M3 Air lacks punch at higher volumes in comparison to the M2 Air, but it's not all that noticeable, so it could be placebo. What has improved are the microphones with what Apple calls enhanced voice clarity and wide spectrum microphone modes. I think this makes perfect sense for the M3 Air. A better quality uh, microphone is great for meetings on the move, and Apple's likely preparing for improved voice recognition for AI. It's also worth pointing out that the only difference between the 13 inch and 15 inch M3 Airs outside of its size, of course, are the speakers. The 15 inch comes with six speakers, whereas the 13 inch comes with four. And if you like using your MacBook in a docked setup, the M3 chip now supports two external displays, but only in clamshell mode. So when the laptop lid is closed in this mode, it supports a primary display up to 6K resolution and a secondary display up to 5K, both at 60 Hertz, or you could choose to prioritize refresh rate up to 144 Hertz at 4K resolution. So basically it can't support dual Pro XDR displays, but I mean, not many, if anyone will need that sort of setup with a MacBook Air. Interesting that the core M3 14 inch MacBook Pro doesn't even support two external displays yet, but likely Apple will change this with a future software update. On the connectivity front, the M3 Air now supports Wi-Fi 6E, which means it is able to connect to faster 6 gigahertz networks. But my gripe I mentioned uh, in my previous M2 Air review is the fact that the Thunderbolt ports are on both on the left-hand side. It would have been much more practical if they had balanced the ports on either side because there's been situations where the cable reached the right side but not the left. Okay guys, so is the M3 Air worth buying? After spending a week using it every day, this is my favorite everyday laptop. There's just no way around it for me. I absolutely love it. As someone that travels and I can't stay put in one place, 
while trying to hold down a pretty heavy workload. The 13 inch M3 Air is one of the most important devices that I use in my day and going from eight gigabytes of RAM to 16 gigabytes and an M3 chipset has unlocked a lot more from my everyday workflow, being able to get more done since I'm less throttled by hardware. But, and here is the big but, these base configurations with eight gigabytes of RAM isn't great value for money. But what is great value for money right now is the M2 MacBook Airs. Apple may have discontinued the M1, but the M2 Air is still available to purchase at a lower cost price at only $1,200 for the base model with 16 gigabytes RAM upgrade. Heck, you could even find it significantly less secondhand. So that's my recommendation. Get the M2 Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM if you're looking to save money. But the M3 Air suits people who are on the go and need that slim form factor while maximizing power. All right, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, drop the code word comment new rule and I'll give it a like. And while you're here, I'll drop a video over here where I go over the best free Mac apps for your MacBook Air. You'll definitely want to download and use. So go check that video out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.